unwanted intruder questions about the response after a man enters a Malibu Canyon Village apartment and touches a female student. Missing in Malibu, the growing concern as the search for missing woman reaches the 10-day mark. And the parking at Nobu is no good. The solutions being discussed tonight to ease traffic in and out of the restaurant. News at 5 starts now. News, weather, and sports. Live from Malibu, this is Newswave 32. The search for an assault suspect is prompting residents at one Malibu apartment complex to take extra precautions. Good evening, I'm Hannah Fullman. And I'm Savannah Welch. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of Newswaves. In our top story tonight, Newswaves 32 reporter Josie Leonetti is live outside the complex where the incident occurred with details on the break-in and how residents are reacting. Josie? Thank you, Hannah. I'm here outside Malibu Canyon Village Apartments, where police say 10 days ago, a man entered an unlocked apartment building and assaulted a female resident. Now, police released a statement just 10 days, just yesterday, announcing the incident and asking for the public's help in finding the man involved. Now, I had the chance to speak with law enforcement and residents about what occurred. 3.45 a.m. on February 8th, woken up to a sight she never expected. In a statement released from police yesterday, it claims a man allegedly walked into an unlocked apartment in the Malibu Canyon Village complex and awoke a female tenant by assaulting her. The tenant told police that she proceeded to point to the door, prompting the intruder to apologize and abruptly leave. Police obtained surveillance footage of the man attempting to open several doors in the building. He is described as being around 30 years old, 6 feet tall, and about 170 pounds. He's said to have blonde hair, a long beard, and is believed to be homeless. He was last seen wearing all black clothing and a backwards baseball cap. Uh, detectives from the station uh, are actively invest currently and actively investigating it. You know, certainly if they see something, please call the station or Crime Stoppers. The complex notified residents about the incident four days after. We got this on our door on the 12th. And it didn't really specify anything, but it just said, Dear residents, an incident occurred where an intruder entered an unlocked unit and then said, like, be diligent and keep your doors locked. So that was freaky to find. Despite the gate, station guard, and multiple surveillance cameras, some residents, like Vernie Covarubius, aren't surprised the man was able to gain entrance and can't help but think it could have been them. I had heard the person who got their apartment broken into had left their door open because they were waiting for their roommate to come home and they didn't have their key and that's something that my roommates and I have done many times before so that was pretty frightening for me to hear because I felt like it could have been me. Others in the complex like Savannah Montalvo see why some feel comfortable leaving doors unlocked. I don't do it, but I think a lot of people here do because there's so many Pepperdine students that live here. And also, I think because there's a gate guard and like a gate code and like it's gated that people have this image that it's very safe and like nothing can really happen here. But perhaps not anymore. Now that we know that it happened, we can make sure to keep ourselves safe. I'm Josie Leonetti, Newswaves 32. Now, it's believed the man gained access by climbing quite a fairly steep hill on the side of the building. It's yet to be seen if the complex will implement any more safety measures after the incident. We'll give you more information as it comes in. For now, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Josie. Authorities are still searching for a missing Malibu woman who vanished 10 days ago without a trace. Julia Christine Schneider was last seen at her home in the 43rd hundred block of Ocean View Drive on February 8th. L.A. County sheriffs believe Schneider left on foot, but there is no indication of where she may have gone. Search and rescue teams combed through Latigo Canyon over the weekend using canines and drones. Schneider suffers from bipolar disorder and has straight blonde hair and blue eyes. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the missing persons unit at 323-890-5500. Santa Monica police are investigating the filming of a porn video at one of the city's public libraries. A video showing a man and woman sneaking into the Ocean Park Library and carrying out sex acts was posted on an adult film website. 
The 10 minute video also shows the woman exposing herself on the streets of Santa Monica in front of John Muir Elementary. City officials say the obscene acts in the library are illegal and are working to figure out how this happened. The video has already been taken off of the website. Be prepared for road closures and delays on your commute home as President Trump is in town this evening. The president arrived in L.A. this afternoon to meet with local officials about plans for the 2028 Summer Olympics. Trump is speaking at a fundraising dinner in Beverly Hills tonight, shutting down major roads in the area near the 10 and 405 freeways. Beverly Drive, Cannon Drive and Clifton Drive are completely closed until 8 p.m. Crescent Drive will be shut down between North and South Santa Monica Boulevard until 10 p.m. This is Trump's first visit to L.A. since September 2019. He will be heading to Bakersfield tomorrow. The sushi is great. The parking is not. A planning commission meeting where Nobu's parking issues will be discussed starts at 630. News Waves 32 reporter Danny Mastin is live outside the restaurant with some of the proposed solutions. Danny. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah, as you can see here, the Nobu parking lot is not too backed up right now. We can see that there are a few cars here, but as the evening traffic starts to pick up, cars will be jammed trying to get into the parking lot and they will be jammed along PCH. This traffic has caused a lot of issues for Malibu and the city is trying to come up with a permanent plan. Tonight, the Planning Commission will meet to discuss ways to alleviate some of these traffic issues. Malibu restaurants Nobu and Soho Little Beach House have one thing in common, parking space issues. And pulling up there is just like a death trap. The restaurant and clubhouse are both located on PCH and are a popular dinner destination for both locals and tourists. While this may be great for businesses, the cars driving in and out of the parking lots cause major traffic backups along PCH. And you're just like a sitting duck sitting there on PCH waiting for somebody to come and just like smash you. Malibu City has tried to enforce rules to prevent this, but the issue continues, especially during the busy summer months. I don't drive down there every day, but I could say that I drive down there probably once or twice a week and it's pretty much always backed up. The Planning Commission will meet tonight to provide an update on the progress of finding a solution. The Commission, along with the restaurants, proposed a solution to have a combined entrance, but in order for this to be implemented, the city needs Caltrans approval to restripe the lanes on PCH. Caltrans response may be released in tonight's meeting, but residents are getting frustrated that Malibu has not implemented a solution yet. There's no traffic control on it, and there's nobody monitoring it. And there's people in the parking lot that are navigating once you get into the lot, but I think the back of all PCH is where the danger is. They suggest adding in a stoplight or turn lane to help keep traffic moving. If you want to raise your concerns or possible solutions for these traffic problems, the meeting will take place at the Malibu City Hall at 6.30 p.m. Live from PCH, I'm Danny Mastin, Newswaves 32. Thank you, Danny. The Planning Commission is also discussing whether or not to allow a local store to add wine to your shopping experience. Fred Siegel is in the talks with the city to add a wine tasting area to its Malibu Village location. The retail store says it is not creating a sit down area to serve food and drinks, but wants to offer customers samples of Fred Siegel's exclusive wine brand. City staff are recommending that the Planning Commission approve Fred Siegel's plans tonight. Teachers are opposing the school district's plan to no longer allow students from outside district boundaries to bus in and attend Malibu schools. Every teacher at Malibu Middle and High School have signed an open letter to the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District, objecting to the end of open enrollment. The district is no longer receiving funding from the state for educating students outside of district boundaries. In their letter, teachers say removing these students would significantly reduce enrollment and future funding. Malibu's new skate park is rolling into the last phase of approval. The final designs are in for the temporary skate park that will be built next to Malibu Bluffs Park. The park is expected to include several skate ramps, a quarter pipe, and a mini bowl. The Parks and Rec Commission is meeting tonight at 5.30 p.m. to discuss the design. Malibu City Council is approving the final design for the skate park during their meeting next Monday. The park is expected to open this May. Still ahead, inside a health crisis. 
A look at Shanghai as many still fear the coronavirus and how Pepperdine students brought home from the city are doing back in Malibu. It's been a plan in the making for decades. The push to build campsites at a local park continues to spark outrage among locals. Return visitor where this bobcat has been caught on camera and more than once. Morning gray making way for sunny skies, but we are in for a warm up and possibly some rain. Your full forecast is next. Today is the last day to register to vote in the California primary on March 3rd. Although the election is two weeks away, you can start casting your ballots this weekend. Julian Cabrillo Elementary is one of 250 voting centers opening in LA County on Saturday for residents to vote early. This is the first year the county is offering early voting. The Michael Landon Community Center at Malibu Bluffs Park will also serve as early voting center starting next Saturday, the 29th. Representatives who serve Malibu in Congress and in California state government are up for re-election in the primary. Register to vote online at registertovote.ca.gov. On the hunt, in Agora Hills, a camera captures a backyard visitor, not once, but twice. Take a look. The resident captured this video off their ring camera of a bobcat prowling through their backyard. The bobcat can be seen walking around the back of the home. The resident posted the video on a neighborhood app and said it was the second time they had seen the bobcat in their backyard. Nocturnal creatures are not known to be aggressive toward people, but wildlife officials recommend taking precautions to protect pets from them. Well, imagine oh having a little bobcat in your backyard. Yeah, what a fun little friendly, you know. I feel like if I was younger, I'd want to be like, oh my gosh, there's a cat, like, let's go pet it. But I oh, know that bobcat. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> well, I hear I there's know. some nice weather coming in for us. We're getting some warmth. Yeah, yeah it's so exciting. It's yeah. been, you know, pretty gray and cloudy. But yeah, we I'm ready were, for the beach. We were promised an early spring, so that should be coming up. Yeah. Um, so after a pretty gray start to the day, it's currently 63 degrees and sunny. Humidity is at 76% and winds are traveling at 6 miles per hour. Let's take a look at our regional temperatures map. In Santa Monica, it is 61 degrees and sunny. Calabasas is getting a taste of spring and is currently 73 degrees and sunny. Agora Hills is sunny and warm, currently at 70 degrees. Thousand Oaks is also sunny at 68 degrees. Today's fire threat is very low and will remain low for the rest of this week. Waves are expected to reach 1 to 2 feet today. Tomorrow's surf conditions are poor with 1 to 2 foot waves expected again. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a high of 61 degrees and a low of 50. 49 degrees. Thursday will be the warmest day of the week and sunny with a high of 
68 and a low of 51. Friday is going to be mostly sunny with a high of 66 and a low of 50. Late Friday night and into Saturday morning, there will be a 50% chance of rain and a 20% chance of thunderstorms. But it is likely that we in Malibu will not experience this passing storm. Wow, a 20% chance of thunderstorms. I, I kind of want the rain. I like Me the rain. Too. Yeah, it's nice to like fall asleep too with it pattering against your window. Thunderstorms are <laughs> so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah so are. I kind of hope that 20% chance is a little higher. A we little need higher. it. We need well, the rain. 56 we of do. rain. So yeah, the rain good. is more likely than the thunderstorms. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. thank you for joining us. The coronavirus has taken one of the busiest cities in the world to one of the emptiest. Take a look at this new video of Shanghai showing deserted streets and those still covered in plastic. Pepperdine students who were studying abroad in Shanghai are now safely back on the Malibu campus. The students were quarantined for two weeks before resuming classes in Malibu yesterday. The Pepperdine Shanghai program will continue to be suspended through the summer. As of this morning, the coronavirus has reached over 70,000 cases and nearly 2,000 deaths. The Malibu City Council is set to adopt new mass evacuation plans for citywide emergencies like the Woolsey Fire. The plan divides Malibu into several evacuation zones and splits evacuation phases into two levels, voluntary and mandatory. Safety checks and traffic control strategies are also on the list of updates. In particular, the plan calls for more information about re-entry to the city after emergencies, including the safety checks that must be performed. The council will discuss and vote on adopting these changes at next Monday's regular meeting. The Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy is moving forward with plans for a campground right across from Pepperdine. I spoke with residents and the project manager about how the 50 campsites would affect the community. A new campsite proposal for Malibu Bluffs Park is met with resistance from locals. It would not only disrupt the job that I have here, but you're disrupting already all of the events that they have. The Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy has plans to build 50 campsites at the western end of the park. SMMC project manager Elena Egger says the plan has been set for decades. Quote, in the 1970s, Malibu Bluffs Park was slated for campsites by the Coastal Act. So Malibu Bluffs was always intended to be a campground. End quote. Egger says the goal is for this area to be used as a space for those who wouldn't normally have access to the coast. However, former SMMC board member says Joe Edmonston, the leader of the SMMC, may not have the public's best interest in mind. Joe has been saying that forever. When, how often does he bring those kids out to use the resources here, except when he wants a photo op? Katia Gidis is a local Malibu resident. She expresses concerns that the campsites could harm the environment. They're suffering a lot of stress as it is. And campgrounds are notorious for creating a lot of pollution. She says Edmonston should look elsewhere. There's plenty, like I said, of, of already available places that, that will not stress the environment as much as this. Egger says the campsites will avoid negatively impacting the environment. Quote, they won't be in the environmentally sensitive habitat area. End quote. Protecting the environment is only one of the major concerns the public has for the creation of the campsites. Cider says the campsites could bring more homeless to a central area. They typically go to campsites because that's something they can do that has running water and bathrooms. To fund the changes to the area, the SMMC is receiving state funds. A date to begin developing the area has not yet been set. Although there is no current date for the constructions of the campsites, there is in the works that patrol people will be monitoring the campsites to avoid homelessness and any problems with ESHA areas. A pause in the case against Harvey Weinstein. What the jury could be thinking. Tapped out until dance brought her back. The story of one dancer's return to center stage. Sustaining your coffee drinking habit. Why the next time you grab a Starbucks, they may ask for your cup back. And the summer job where all you need is a secure identity and superpowers. Stay with us.
Pepperdine men's basketball faces a tough loss against the number two team in the nation. The Waves face the Gonzaga Bulldogs Friday evening in Firestone Fieldhouse. The 77-89 loss for the Waves led Gonzaga to their 18th consecutive win. With only three games left in the season, every game counts leading up to the WCC Championships beginning March 5th. The Waves face Portland Thursday at 6 p.m. The game will be streamed on Spectrum Sports Net. Wow, oh, it was a good game. I was there. At I was the at the event. game too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, that's it so fun. It was packed. It was crazy. Yes, there were so many security guards and the. Oh just wow. So packed, like every seat was filled. But it's yeah. so crazy. It was uh -huh. funny. My grandpa emailed me and he was like, "Are you at the game? I, I, are you there? I'm trying to look for you." And I was like, "No, I'm not at the game. But thank you for yeah, watching." Yeah, it was on ESPN. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he lives in Kansas City. We were winning so. at first, so it was. Yeah. We had a good start, and they're number two in the nation. So yeah. I feel like we put up a good fight. It was yeah. a good game overall. Yeah. Oh, really put up a good we fight. We did good. Oh, definitely. Well, I mean, on the topic of basketball, with Kobe Bryant's memorial less than a week away, it's almost time for the public to start buying tickets. This evening, the fans that registered for the memorial will receive an email and text message, including an access code to purchase tickets. Ticket purchases start at 10 p.m. tomorrow, sorry, 10 a.m. tomorrow and range from $24.02 to $224 in three tiers. However, with over 90,000 people registered, some fans are going to be let down because Staples Center only holds 20,000 people. That's, wow. Yeah. I'm so excited that this is happening. I mean, it's yes. a really, it's a beautiful Well, our producer, Caillou, is bit, in the yeah. lottery. So uh, one yeah, out of 90,000. Yes. I she hope she gets it. I know. Yeah. Maybe I'll just take so her ticket. She, oh, she doesn't yeah. know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I hear yeah. there's some exciting things in the entertainment world. Yes, yeah. it's pretty wild. Yeah. I was going to so. say, it looks like you have some interesting stuff coming up. You want to tell us a little bit more about yes, what's going on? Yes, of course. Yeah, thanks, guys. So jury deliberations in Harvey Weinstein's trial began today in in Manhattan. The former acclaimed Hollywood producer is facing five charges, including rape and predatory sexual assault. The charges stem from allegations brought on by actress Jessica Mann and Project Runway assistant Miriam Haley, who both testified. Weinstein's defense attorneys argued the sexual encounters were consens consensual. Weinstein also faces charges of sexual assault separately in Los Angeles. Wow. That's a yeah. heavy story. Yeah. I know. I'm glad that it's finally happening, though, and I hope that the women involved, um, they get justice that they deserve. Yes, definitely. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, it's good to give a voice to those who don't maybe feel as though they can have a voice or have had a voice in the yeah. past, so it's good that some of this is coming to light a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Of course, yes. And um, over the weekend, Pepperdine's Dance Company performed their annual show dance in flight. One performer opens up about her experience choreographing a dance portraying self-love. Newswave's 32 reporter Kaylin Mendez has more. Let's take a look. The self-love was like the main theme, like the one that I really wanted to do. And so the best way to do that was to choreograph a solo because self-love is all about the individual, like the internal, like self. I think before I did this piece, self-love was something I was aspiring for more so because like before I didn't really love myself the way that I should have. I wanted to create a piece that dealt with my own experience of self-acceptance and self-love as I struggle with perfectionism and mental health problems. Obviously it's like an everyday thing that's growing, but I think in the end, yes, it did help me. Finally, like once the chorus hits, I, I start to like smile and like be more engaged in the piece because it, that's like kind of me like accepting, like coming to terms with my flaws. Realizing that nobody's perfect and even if society tells you you're not perfect, that your imperfections make you perfect. And I've just kind of learned to like go with it and like let myself be free. Up on the stage, when I get to do my piece, I just feel like liberated, lifted. That weight's off my shoulders. Wow, you know, I, that was a really powerful performance. I don't know, did you guys go to Diff this weekend? I didn't get a chance to, actually. I wish I did, though. Oh. I've gone before, and their performances are just, they have such deep meaning behind Astounding. them. Astounding, yes. It's not just how great yeah. they perform, but just 
how it all comes together in the end. It's just yes. beautiful. It really is. And, you know, I do think that this year their theme was so abstract. Like, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Kind of talking about feelings and emotions. And the way that they represented that through dance was just, like, so powerful. Yes. And one of the diff dancers came up to me afterwards, and she was like, you better have felt something after that. <laughs> I was like, don't worry. I definitely did. It was just, it was a beautiful showcase. So yes. important. Yeah. And, like, self-love, all those topics. Yes. Like, very yeah. important to highlight and just oh, reach out mm -hmm. to the community. I'm glad this dancer had the opportunity to do that and to learn something from it too. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> it's really cool. It's interesting, yeah, how you can really take something that you can't really see that's not very tangible and make it something that everyone can experience and yes. understand. Yeah. Well, anyways, on a different topic, Oscar winning actor Anthony Hopkins is saying goodbye to the boo. The Hannibal actor put his 4,000 square foot cliffside Malibu home on the market for a whopping $11.5 million. The house is perched on a cliff with a beautiful ocean view above Zuma Beach and Point Doom. The house was built in the 1950s and has five bedrooms, five bathrooms, a large living room, and a pair of fireplaces. The house also has an art room in a cabana by the pool and a sauna encased in glass in the master bathroom. Now, that sounds oh. like a house I would like to purchase, yeah. but <laughs> I know, I'm like, why is he selling it? Like, I just sell it to I me. Know. I just don't want to have the $11 million. <laughs> if we could maybe just get that yes. money, we can all go move yeah. in. Maybe yeah. the whole Newswaves team can go buy it, maybe. Newswaves house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's never too late to follow your superhero dreams. Disney California Adventure is holding open auditions for those interested in becoming a Marvel superhero. Performers hoping to become their favorite superhero will need to be skilled in theatrical hand-to-hand -hand combat, acrobatics, and tumbling. The new Avengers campus is expected to replace Bugs Land this summer. Casting submissions are open until March 4th. Now, I think I'm going to go head over to Disneyland and audition for yeah. that. I think, oh, wow, definitely. can you imagine me a superhero? Like, yeah. That'd be so, <laughs> so <hard. laughs> yeah. I, I want to be Spider-Man, so I don't know. Well, after well, they raise their ticket dreams. prices, like, I'm ready to be one of the performers so I don't have yeah. to pay to get into the park. <laughs> Here you go. Smart idea. <laughs> well, thank you for thank you so much, sharing guys. entertainment with us thank today. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. When you go to some Starbucks or McDonald's, it might be time to keep that cup. A new program starting this week is introducing two types of smart reusable cups. Starbucks and McDonald's use billions of cups a year that are not able to be recycled. The new initiative will create more durable cups that will be available for reuse. Customers might soon be able to drop off their used cups in a special bin. For all the mint lovers out there, it's time to rejoice. An iconic mint drink is back. McDonald's is bringing back its popular mint-flavored shamrock shake for the first time in three years. The shake is coming back to stores tomorrow, along with a brand new Oreo shamrock shake. The shamrock shake will be available at McDonald's until March 24th. That sounds great. I'm ready for a shamrock shake. Do you guys um, like those? Yes, I really like those. Those are my feel-good drinks back then. But. <laughs> we love a good feel-good drink. We do. Well, definitely over the weekend, maybe we can go pick one yes. up this next week. Yeah. Okay. Well, well that, that will do it for us this evening. Have a great night.